Okay, so I, you can see how the duotone highlights work. I'm cutting away from my shadows. This to me is the safest way. And it's really dramatic because they're revealing the really bright duotone highlights underneath. So if I want this hand to look like it's holding something solid, I want to cut all that away from my shadows. So that there's a strong highlight on the hand and on the hair that it's holding onto. And it's called duotone because you're splitting every local color, local flat color, into highlights and shadows. You're splitting it in two directions. Whoops. And you can be pretty bold with it because you can always just replicate it with your flat color layer. It's important that you're not erasing your flat color layer. And if you study drawing and painting from observation and you learn about still lifes with different light sources, you can be pretty informed about what light would do in any situation. And that can help, help you know where to put your edges and not get too kind of lost in the sauce with it. But I think whatever complements your design, you're, you're good with trying out. Now a safe bet is underneath the, the heads of your creatures, your monsters, onto a chest or neck. It's nice to have shadow underneath the head, kind of framing it, right? So I'm going to leave a lot of shadow there. But in these other areas, I might want to have highlight to give it more visual impact. But if I get too fussy with it, it's going to be distracting. Now, the other reason I like the lasso technique is that I can also just do things like this. Just take out a big chunk. And then it looks like someone's shining a flashlight on it, right? It will take all those colors and show what's underneath directly. And that can be kind of interesting. but not always clear in, in communicating. All right, then I'll do just a little bit on my toddler, the back of their shoe. And that seems a little too strangely crisp. So let me just do this. All right, I think I'm done with my hard edge shadows. I can always revisit it, right? I've got the layer. So I'm going to lock these. But before I lock them, I want to check them on my different backgrounds. So on black, very effective on black, right? Really pops. On white, pretty good. I hate that anti-aliasing, but we will fix that before we're done. That's just a glitch of photo P. And then on gray, gray is the one I have the easiest time kind of seeing all these lighting conditions under. But I can also play with the opacity. So if I thought my highlights were a little bright, I just take the opacity on my highlights down and it will reveal 
closer and closer to the flat color underneath. And yes, it should look fine if I turn it all off. But you see how those highlights, they pop it a little. I can also just use an eraser and just erase the highlights where I think I need them. So I'll leave it at 84%. The shadows, maybe I, I take to around. Yeah, let's say 92%. Okay, now I'm going to lock these. Now this is an important step. I'm going to turn off every layer except for all the coloring layers. And then I'm going to select all the coloring layers. I'm going to hold down Option and say Layer Merge Layers. By holding down Option, what it does is it combines all those coloring layers into one layer. So now my one color layer is a complex, what? what's going on? <laughs> it's a complex color layer, just like that. Good time to save. Which looks pretty good even without line art, right? That's why sometimes digital coloring exists even when the outline has been removed. That's a valid way of working, especially on black or on gray, right? But then with the line art, it looks even sharper. Okay, now that I have that, though, I can lock that. I can keep that combined, but I'm going to make a duplicate of that. And now I'm going to do um, the only filter I teach. So I'm going to turn off the line art so you can see this. And we're going to turn immediately hard edge duotone into soft edge duotone in one step. Again, this is hard edge duotone. This is hard edge duotone. This is soft edge duotone. That's hard edged. That's soft edged. I want you to know and recognize both. This is soft edge duotone. Soft edge duotone. Even though there's hard edge in the, the lettering here, soft edged on the character. You can have a mix of both. So what do I do? I go to filter. I go to blur. I go to Gaussian Blur on a copy of my combined duotone and I blur it as much as I want. Right? Not so much that it becomes unrecognizable, but see what it does to my edges. I think of it like printing this out with water soluble ink and then spraying it with water. So everything softens. Now, if I turn on my line art, all of a sudden, what do I have? I have soft transitions between the highlights and the shadows. That is soft edge duotone. Do I like that more? I don't know. It might be okay for some things and not okay for other things, right? So I can play with opacity. This is actually one of my favorite techniques for digital illustration when I have to do it fast. I take the opacity down on my soft edge, so it's just kind of a like a soft transition step. You see it? You can kind of barely see it. So there's my hard edge, then it kind of glows around it. But then I'll change it from normal mode to something called dissolve mode. And what that does is actually gives me what looks kind of like a, a, a construction paper texture. Because digital color can look mighty flat, you know, and mighty technical. So sometimes it's nice to give it a little texture. But you'll notice then when you do that, it's going beyond your black lines a little bit. So when you blur, all of your color shapes just blur out which is helpful because it cleans up the anti-aliasing, but it's not helpful about your outside edges. So what do you need to do then? You go to your black vector line art, you use your magic wand with contiguous turned on, you select the outside space around it with any undercuts, like this little hole in the tail right here. And now I take that selection, right? And I delete it from my soft edge duotone layer. 
And now that gets rid of anything outside of the line art. So there are tons and tons of techniques you can play with in this kind of sandwich model. I can also use an eraser with varying soft edges and a lower opacity and just gently erase away. from certain things, right, in any layer. But the end result is getting lights and darks as values into one layer. Once you've had that, I'm going to go ahead and call this duotone soft edge. It's no longer just the shadows. And I'm going to label the one I did underneath that, which is an important step so that your filter is, your Gaussian blur filter is effective. This is my duotone hard edge all combined into one, right? So when I turn that off, it's hard edge, 100%. When I turn it on, there's soft edge on top of the hard edge. I can decide whether I want to leave them uh, individually on or not. Okay, now I'm going to take this duotone soft edge and I'm going to further play with lighting in a really direct way using dodge and burn. And you might remember dodge and burn from our first proving ground when we were making shadows, when we were fixing lighting. So if I use dodge tool, I'm always going to do it with a pressure sensitive brush, 30% exposure or lower, only on the midtones with a large brush with 0% hardness. I'm going to unlock it. This is on my soft edge layer. I could do it on a duplicate if I wanted. But now I'm just going to brighten it up where I think it needs to be brightened up. I'll turn off dissolve for now. Just so you can kind of see it in all its digital glory. Right. But what's great about this is anywhere I dodge, it's going to brighten. It's all underneath the line art. And then anywhere I burn, it's going to darken. So same thing, below 30%, big brush, 0% hardness. And it's only going to darken from the available pixels. And there's no risk to it because you have a duplicate layer. So you're just trying to really set the direction of your lighting and the impact. So I need to dodge a lot because I got kind of bored and didn't do any highlights on this bottom. Now this is a trick I love. Even though we're doing soft edged, what if I feel like I really need a hard edge accent somewhere, like on this arm here? I can take my lasso and just draw a shape and then I can just dodge within that stenciled shape, then deselect, and I get a hard edge. So this is the way that they can be easily mixed. If I want one like along the neck here, I can make kind of a, a lasso of a hard edge shape with 0% feather or 0 feather, and then I just dodge, and then immediately it gives me that. So these are kind of all the techniques that colorists often use. Colorists have to work very quickly for digital coloring. It's a high demand field because it create, you not only have to have like good aesthetics, but you have to have solid technique. Now the same way that I can hard edge and dodge, I can hard edge and burn all on the same layer. If anyone has any experience airbrushing, this is very much what airbrushing is. You kind of stencil out the area, and then you just paint right in that area. Just to get little variations. All duotone, right? All variations on the pixels that are already there. So this is still all just duotone.